Ladies and gentlemen, half tracks are back. What is going on, my friends? Hank here from Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling with some breaking news from the wonderful world of scale modeling. This past weekend, way over on the other side of the world in Japan, we had the 61st annual Shizuoka Hobby Festival, which is a big trade show for hobby related products and vendors. And on Friday, we woke up over here, stateside, to some very exciting and quite unexpected announcements posted on the Tamiya Japan official Instagram account. In the next few months, we are going to be getting not one, not two, but 10 reboxed, re-released classic Tamiya kits back on the market. We're going to go through the whole roster right here, but I'm pretty stoked for a few of these, if you couldn't tell from the intro. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video to hear about the kits that I am the most excited about and why I think you should be too. So up first, we're going to start with a subject we've covered in a previous news video back in December. And in that video, I told you guys about some reboxed 148 scale combo kits that we were getting from the good folks over at Tamiya. These were essentially value packs of existing 148 scale aircraft kits paired with ground vehicles and crews, a little diorama in a box style release, if you will. In that first batch, we got the BF-109 G6, the P-51D Mustang, the Dornier DO-335 Feel, and the Kawasaki Ki-61 Tony. If you'd like to learn more about those ones, you can check out that original video right here. But now, we've just learned that we're getting four more of those combo packs. Up first, we're getting the Jug, the Rough and Tumble P-47D, the bubble top version, and this will be paired with the iconic quarter ton Jeep at an MSRP of 34 US dollars. Next, we've got the Hero of the Battle of Britain, the Supermarine Spitfire Mark I, paired with the light utility car Tilly, which will be going for an MSRP of 36 US dollars. We'll also be getting the rugged, multi-use, beast of the east, the Aleutian IL-2 Sturmovic, paired with the Gaz 67B, and this one is going to be going for 45 bucks. And finally, to round out this lineup, we've got the infamous Dora, the FW190D, paired with the 11CV staff car. And worth noting here, this Dora release looks like it's coming with the decal pack from the 2002 special release of the FW190D, rather than the original 95 boxing. So you've got markings in here for the JV44 Doras. These were the 190s that Adolf Galan's Jagerverband, the so-called squadron of experts, used at the end of the war to help protect the ME262 jets as they took off and landed, when they were the most vulnerable. Pretty cool. And of course, that 190 combo kit is going to be going for 30 US dollars. So as we discussed back in that December video with the first batch, all re-releases here, but I'm never going to argue with some money-saving value packs hitting the market. If you're looking to do a little diorama work and you need the ground vehicles anyway, these are a great option. Some older engineering here with some noted dimensional issues, particularly with the 190, but I think these are fair prices considering what we're getting. All right, with those aircraft bundles covered, let's move on to the big boys. We're in 135 scale territory here now. And these are the releases that I'm particularly excited about. These are some old kits from Tamiya. Classic, groundbreaking releases that honestly, in a lot of ways, helped make this hobby what it is today. First up, and you guys know I love a Sherman, we've got Tamiya's 1987 M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo. One of the things that Tamiya has done so well over the years is riff off of existing kits to give us a wide range of sub-variants within a single weapons platform. In the real world, up in 1 to 1 scale, these vehicles had to evolve and adapt to fit the combat conditions that they faced in the field. In this example, the M4 Sherman went through so many technological upgrades and advancements during its combat career. And this Jumbo release from Tamiya was their very first variant upgrade off of their original M4 Sherman kit. Tamiya released their very first 135 scale M4 Sherman in 1981, it was an M4A3, and in 87 they released this groundbreaking M4A3E2. This was, by what I can tell, the very first Sherman Jumbo kit on the international model market, and it helped springboard all those other Sherman variants that we came to know from Tamiya, and really all the other model manufacturers for that matter. Now, as it is, there aren't a ton of 135 scale jumbo kits available on the market today. I've built up the Oscar kit, which is a lovely one, and I know Meng has one as well. This original Tamiya kit has been very difficult to find for many years now, so it's going to be a welcome addition back on the modeling landscape. This is an old kit, of course. It has some dimensional issues in context to the real vehicle, but at 26 US dollars, it's a wonderful piece of modeling history and a fun addition to any roster of Sherman tanks. All right, so these next three, I'm going to cover in one little section here, and I think these have to be the ones that I'm the most excited about from this particular batch. For some reason, that is a complete mystery to me, and I'm sure to many of you 135 scale military modelers out there, there are very few American half tracks on the market today. The M3 half track and all its variants was an extremely widely used armored personnel carrier during the Second World War and beyond, 
and over 50,000 vehicles were produced during its service life. Right now, Dragon has a few M3 variants available, but that's pretty much it if you want to build one of these up. But now, Tamiya is reviving its absolute classic roster of M3 half-track variants for a limited time only. Up first, we're getting the stock M3A2 APC version of the M3 half-track, complete with a full allotment of eight US infantry figures to fill up the interior. Now I will say, with this base version and with the ones to follow, this is an old kit. The release is from 1975, so the molds aren't going to be the super highly detailed ones that we're used to seeing on the latest releases from Tamiya. But considering these parts are based off of designs that are nearly 50 years old, still pretty impressive. And there are about a billion aftermarket companies that are going to jump all over this and release all sorts of upgrade sets, in addition to the ones that are already out there. So if you really want to soup this thing up, I'm sure you're going to have the tools to do so. Now, if unique support vehicles are more your thing, Tamiya is also releasing two of their M3 half-track variants alongside the base M3A2 version. First up, we've got the M21 mortar carrier version, which is essentially just the APC with the crew compartment emptied out and replaced with an 81 millimeter mortar and ammo, which is pretty cool in itself. And then we've also got the M16 multiple gun motor carriage, which was the anti-air variant of the M3 with the quad mounted 50 cal platform in the fighting compartment. So three fantastic options of this classic Tamiya kit coming back to the market. All three of these are listed at around $20 apparently, which I imagine is going to get a little bit higher. That probably isn't right. In any case, I think the market has been dying for a reasonably priced M3 half-track kit for a really long time now, and these guys should be a great fit in that role. I'll probably be grabbing all three of these, definitely at least the M3A2 APC version, but let me know in the comments below which one you were the most excited about. All right, so we've covered eight of our 10 announced re-releases from Tamiya. This is a lot. So last two for today, both in 135 scale, both named Martyr, though very different vehicles. First is Tamiya's Bundeswehr Martyr 1A2. This is the infantry fighting vehicle originally released in 1977. And then we've got the Tamiya SDKFC 131 Martyr 2, the self-propelled gun originally released in 1971. Two very interesting specialized fighting vehicles, some more niche kits here. The Martyr 1A2 is a nice contemporary vehicle offering. This IFV is still being used by the German army and an allotment of them just got sent over to Ukraine, though we're not getting any Ukrainian markings with this particular release. And the World War II Martyr 2 is another one of those lovely feats of engineering where the Germans took a big old 75mm Pac-40 or a captured Soviet 762 and slapped it on a Panzer II chassis. We've had quite a few World War II Martyr variants from the folks at Tamiya over the years, but this is the one that started it all back in 1977. So look at that lineup. We are going to have a busy summer. According to the Tamiya Japan Instagram account, these are supposed to start hitting the market in August, but I'm not sure if that date directly relates to when these are going to arrive in the US or elsewhere in the world. There isn't much literature out there about these kits yet. The information I'm sharing with you guys today is straight from the Tamiya Instagram account, and at the time of recording, these aren't even formally listed on the Tamiya website yet. But let me know in the comments below what you think about this news from Tamiya. Are you excited to get your hands on some of these classic kits? Or are you going to be holding out for some all new kits down the road? Please be sure to subscribe right here to Sprues and Brews Scale Modeling for more breaking news from this wonderful world of scale modeling, as well as build videos, history lessons, and all sorts of good stuff. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.